Hi YouTube, this is Raven from Raven's Life Takes Flight. In my last video entitled Finding Your Voice After Abuse, I talked about how abuse can come in many forms and can be so subtle at times that it's hard to recognize. Abuse can be covert or passive and can come from those you think love you the most. If you don't learn from your mistakes and heal from the abuse, you're more likely to repeat the same mistakes. In my case, I didn't understand or know about narcissistic abuse, and I certainly didn't know about family dynamics and family roles. I went from living with my narcissistic husband to moving next to my narcissistic brother, who I believe is a son husband. Now, at the time I moved here, I was in shell shock. I had literally gone from being married one week, living in the suburbs and buying a new house, to the next week getting a divorce, fighting for my children, and having no place to live. I had no money. I made roughly $20,000 a year at my work from home job, and my husband made almost $80,000 a year. I had no credit card and no place to live, so the only option I had if I was going to keep my children was to move into my grandmother's farmhouse next to my parents and brother. I was in survival mode for several years, just healing from the emotional abuse, and so focused on the trauma my ex-husband was still causing me that I didn't see the family dynamics right in front of me or the subtle abuse coming from my son-husband brother. Like I said, I didn't even know what a son-husband was. I had never heard the term son-husband until I began researching narcissistic abuse and watching YouTube videos to figure out what was going on and why it seemed like a lot of people in my life were toxic. A son-husband can be described as a mama's boy, but taken to an unhealthy level. Now, I know in our culture, gender roles are fluid and changing all the time, so a son-husband doesn't necessarily need to be between a man and his mother. I think these traits can also be seen in other gender roles in families, such as mother-to-daughter relationship. But the purposes of this video, I'm talking about relationships between a man and his mother. Son husbands live to fulfill their mother's needs, and my mother-in-law was the type of mother where you've heard the old saying, if mama ain't happy, then nobody's happy. She would hold the entire house hostage to her mood swings and demands, and her sons would snap to attention like little soldiers to please mommy. It was a sick dynamic to watch her sons go out of their way to prove their love to their mother. My husband worried that he would lose his mother's love if he had a conflict with a family event or couldn't be present. And his sister loved to remind him how horribly he had treated his mother by missing a family event. Some husbands have this codependent relationship with their mothers where the mother can sometimes lean on their child to meet their emotional needs. A parent will confide in the child and share adult feelings as if they are the spouse. It's sometimes called emotional incest. The child takes on the role of making their parent happy and is forced to grow up quickly by dealing with adult emotions and problems. The child may feel like their parent's happiness is their personal responsibility. They may grow up quickly, but they don't mature emotionally. When a son husband is married, there are always three people in the marriage, the husband, the wife, and the mother-in-law. Son husbands will often put the needs of their mother ahead of their wives and children. An, ex an example can be that you've scheduled a family outing on the weekend, and at the last minute, your husband says his mother has a crisis and he has to go over to her house. You find out later the crisis was she wanted her gutters cleaned out or to mow her lawn. When mommy wants or needs something, she takes first priority. When I met my husband's grandmother before our wedding, she warned me by saying, just remember, you're marrying my grandson and he will be your husband, but he will always be his mother's son. She was trying to tell me that he would put his mother first in the relationship, and boy, was she right. These women can be jealous of their son's fiance or wife. I found this to be true when we were engaged. His mother went out to the backyard and sat on the swing set crying, saying, I'm losing my baby boy. Sorry, that's the way she talked. I love to do voices and dramatic readings in my pastime as well. Anyway, she emotionally manipulated him to make him go outside and sit down next to her on the swing set and reassure her that she wasn't losing him. She used guilt as a manipulation tactic to control his behavior. Son husbands will compare their current wife to their mother. They may say things like, that's not how mom does it, or my mother's turkey is better than yours, or my mother had a full-time job and still kept a clean house and cooked dinner every night. What's your problem? The wife always feels like they don't measure up to the mother-in-law. My husband compared me to his mother during one of our many therapy sessions. The therapist finally said he viewed all relationships with women through a lens of his mother. 
I was facing an impossible standard to live up to his first love, his mother. Some husbands have a problem with being independent. Sometimes they live at home and never leave home. They're not encouraged to get a job or go out in the world and find a mate. The mother knows that that men may come and go, but their sons will never leave them. They are the proverbial 20-something-year-old male living in his parents' basement, eating Cheetos all day and playing online games in their underwear. (laughs) Sorry, that's an image I can't get out of my head now. My ex was also a gamer. These men never mature past adolescence, even though they may be 40 years old, wearing a heart monitor, and approaching midlife and getting mail from AARP to sign up for early senior discounts. My brother never left home. He has lived with my parents all his life. My mother cooks for him and cleans and does his laundry. He was a son husband for 43 years until two years ago he married a woman with borderline personality disorder who also lived with her mother. Now they live upstairs in my parents' house with two dogs and a foster baby. Before his wedding, my brother's entire life was enmeshed with my parents' lives. Even now that he's married, my mother still makes dinner for him every night and has it on the table when he gets home from work, and she cleans for him. He has no real bills other than expenditures that he and his wife have accumulated, and when my parents go on vacation, my brother and his wife tag along. They even stayed with my parents in a log cabin during their honeymoon. Imagine having sex for the first time, and you're staying in the same house with your in-laws and parents. Ew. My brother couldn't even have a honeymoon on his own. It's creepy, and I can't imagine staying married after that, but there again, I'm not a son husband. Anyways, my brother is very immature and selfish. He never had to save money. He dropped out of the community college auto mechanics program after my parents paid thousands of dollars for his tools because he failed one math class. He took a job as a truck driver and proceeded to spend all his money. He didn't have to pay for food or rent or utilities, so he spent it on things like two $50,000 pickup trucks four-wheelers, an arsenal of AR-15 rifles, antique tractors that he bought simply to fix up, not sell and make a profit, a $20,000 trailer to haul the tractors on, and so on and so on. He never put money away in a savings account or even in a 401k and told me years ago that he was going to just live off Social Security someday. He was the golden child when we were small and still is. Every time the family went out to eat, he had to go somewhere that he would eat something. He doesn't eat vegetables and only wants to eat meat and potatoes. We could never go to a restaurant I wanted to go to, even when it was my birthday. If we went somewhere he didn't like, he would pout and make a fuss until my parents gave in. Last year, when his wife started some drama and then my brother challenged me to a fist fight outside, more about that to come in a later video, I told my parents I didn't want to see him and certainly did not want him coming to dinner for my birthday. Of course, my wishes were not honored as he and his wife showed up at the restaurant. My stomach hurt the whole time and I couldn't enjoy my birthday. My mother said, well, your brother's just heartbroken over all this family discord. It's always what he wants and my mother defers to him for family decisions like he's the patriarch. I could go into a lot of other things about my childhood, but it would make this video extremely uh, long. I'll sum things up by saying my brother feels very entitled in his role as pseudo-family patriarch. He feels like he has to be involved in everyone's business and that he has the moral authority to tell me how to parent and live my life. When he and his wife started drama last year and just recently, they told me what a horrible parent I am and how my children were disrespectful and that I needed to step up and be the parent they needed. He made a statement when I first moved back here that while I was married, he didn't have a sister. He said for 16 years he lost his sister. He told me he had taken on the role as surrogate father to my children. I told him that I never asked him to replace the children's father. It makes sense to me now why he was angry when he tried to get my daughter to attend church youth group meetings when he was a leader. She had embarrassed him by not making friends even though she was the new kid and terribly shy. He would get angry if he and his new wife invited the kids to go over to our community pool to swim and the kids declined. He took personal offense saying that I turned the kids against him. He also wanted me to put an app on my phone so he could track me and the kids and know our locations at all times. When I had a security system installed in the house, he wanted the code and the app on the phone so he could see the security cameras. I told him absolutely not. He and his wife would hang off every word I said at the family dinner table, as well as what my kids said, and then chastise my daughter for being immoral because she said a curse word. I stopped going to family dinners and never go to my parents' house any longer. I've told them as long as my brother and his wife are living there, I will not subject myself or my kids to their abuse. 
I began to feel stuck in the situation that I would always have to live next to my parents and trying to avoid to my toxic sibling and his wife, which is pretty hard living next to them. I no longer want to be enmeshed in this toxic stew. Sometimes the only way to get peace in your life is to move away from the narcissist as far as you can. Family can be a blessing, but sometimes the blessing can be a curse. Learning about family dynamics has helped me open my eyes to the subtle abuse that can happen right under your nose. For years, I was the frog in the pot of water that was slowly coming to a boil. I love my family, but I need space, and I'm finally taking the steps to leave my um, toxic family and have my life take flight. In the next video, I'll talk about how the abuse from my brother was steadily growing over the years, and marrying a toxic woman just added fuel to the flame. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel and let me know your experience with a son, husband, or toxic family members. Take care.